Good morning. I'm Renee Nell. I'm here at USB8 today doing the talk on We Read For You on the book of Sue Umerman and Catherine Jacobs, The Glass Wall. Now this book is exceptionally relevant still in 2017 where women are still not in top positions in companies to the extent that we expected women to be in this day and age. The, the glass ceiling has been very relevant since 1997 and when I was asked to do this talk I thought is this still relevant? Is this still real? Is there still barriers that are keeping women from reaching their top potential in the work environment? And after reading this book and after looking at all the techniques that they give women, a little bit of crypt notes to get to the top and to break down the glass walls, the glass ceilings, the glass cage that we're in, I truly believe that this book will make a difference in anybody's life that read it, even if you take only one thing out of this book. Very relevant book, worth your read, worth your while. Please join us in this talk and enjoy the, the glass wall. Thank you very much. All of the studies up to now looked at are the barriers. I think we're all in agreement, even me, that yes, there are barriers. So what do we do now? This book, guys, I've read it and I reread it, and you'll see I've highlighted two specific chapters when we get to that. It's very, very relevant in giving us some tools to deal with those barriers. You can read the book as is from the beginning to end, like I did in the beginning, or you can take the book, ask, look at the questions that they give you, and say, what, what do I want to focus on? And just read that chapter. They give you what, a very nice breakdown of how to read the book. So if you want to deal with ambition, how do I deal with my personal ambition? You just go to that chapter. Now the first chapter, men are ambitious, women are ambivalent. Women don't ask for what they want. They, they quote <coughs> some statistics on when people apply for positions, do yourself a favor, I actually did it after I looked at it. I mean, HS, I've got access to the stats. Look at who apply for senior positions in your company. You look at the, the application list and you say, really? Pity applied? Yanni applied? Did I miss the spec? Men will apply for positions where they think they're almost there. Women, I'm not saying it, it's these clever women. Women will only apply for positions when they think, I've got it waxed, I'm there 100%, I'm not going to make my name gut. I am going to wax this role. Then they may apply. How do we deal with it? Very simple. Ask for what you want. All of you have performance reviews. In your performance review, speak to your manager about your ambition. It's not a sin to be ambitious. Do not make the mistake to think that the grass is greener on the other side. Do your homework. Do not make an emotional decision by moving to another company because you're frustrated. Men will go and they will do their research. They will speak to people. They will ask, is it really going to be better on the other side? Women get so frustrated that they jump ship. The next chapter focuses on creativity. In the UK context, the men are seen as much more creative than the women. On the executive level, I'm not talking about the graphics world and the, the design work and the artistic world, I'm talking on the executive level world. They will come up with creative ideas. They are the ones that will come out with out-of-the-box thinking. They say that women tend to stick to the facts very clearly. You stick to the facts, you don't want to bring in other environments, other thoughts, other ideas. And they recommend that you sit down, analyze what is, who's your audience, who are you dealing with. And as females, we need to find ways to connect with the men in the room, even if it means you need to speak rugby and cricket. Tear it up. We are so afraid of standing out. You come into the room, the men jostle for attention. You're busy with, them, with the meeting, the men talk over each other. They are the ones with the ideas, and you're waiting for your turn. You're waiting for somebody to give you a chance to speak, because you're in the room. So you need to get a turn to speak. 
You need to speak up. You need to tell them you're on the wrong track. That's why diversity is there. That's why we are employed. We are competent. But we're not always willing to speak up. Do you have an environment where every person gets a, a turn to speak up? For the managers in the room that feel, I don't have any issues, you need to support not only the females in your team, all the people in your team that doesn't have a voice. You need to create a voice, a space for them. Ha, I like this chapter. Cutting through. <coughs> I alluded to it throughout. Men like to be noticed. Women like to get on with the work. Brand yourself. Dress the way that you want to be perceived. Since reading this book and focusing a little bit on the topic at hand, I just started looking in my company. Now, there's uniforms. It's not um, compulsory. At my level, I can wear a uniform if I want to. So I started looking at who wears the uniforms in the, in the company and who doesn't. And I, I started checking it out. There are women on my level that wear uniforms, okay? and they can. But how are they being perceived in the company? Are they being perceived as senior or are they being perceived as more junior? The way that you present yourself the way that you walk in the corridors, the way that you come into a meeting, do you sleek in and sit down as close to the door so that you can escape? Or do you walk into the room, own your space, own your presence, look at who's the players in the room and position yourself in the room where you have a voice? Be seen. What happens when there's a big presentation? Three, four people work on the presentation. What does Pity do? Uh, yeah, I'll present. Um, I'm the better speaker and, you know, uh, my voice carries much better. What do you do? Oh, it's fine. Um, I've done all the work. People will know that I did the work. No. No. Men see trouble differently from women. Trouble doesn't always trouble men the same way that it troubles women. So if you go into a meeting or you go to your boss with a sales pitch, you go to your boss with an idea, you want to do something different, your boss turns you down. You go to your office, oh, my boss hates me. I made a fool of myself. I didn't understand the context. You go into self-analysis and you, what did I do wrong? Why didn't they like my idea? Why didn't they like my pitch? What does men do? Oh, well, let's move on. Um, next idea. We beat ourselves up. Is sex a problem? Now, a lot of you are going to smile if a man as affairs in the workplace, what do people do? Hey, good for Yanni. If a woman does it, ho, oh, oh, ho, it will carry with your name and your name will be Deary Modder. You, you are lower than dirt in the workplace. If you're a female and you do it. <laughs> the best advice that I can give you, J-D-D-I, just don't do it. Mean girls. We are women in the workplace. We are supposed to be there for the other females. We are supposed to be there to give them a heads up. Men are very good at that. Men are very good at identifying uh, a pity like them and then being behind that pity and supporting that pity. What does women do? Do we support a Susie like us? Or do we want to be the only female shining? And the burnout. You are a woman in the workplace. You have to balance quite a few roles. Acknowledge when you get to a point where you really can't anymore. Know when to walk away. The secret rules of work. Every single environment has that code that you need to decipher. The code in the company. That rules that is not in the rule book, it's implicit rules. A lot of work we need to do on not taking things personally. It's very important for us to distinguish between the business world and me as a person. Ah, this one I also read twice, three times, four times. How often have you heard about 
a colleague of yours that burst out in tears in a meeting. Man rent, rent and rave, yell at her. It happens. Yell at her and she starts crying. It happens. What does men do? They explode back. They deal with anger differently than females. Learn techniques to cope with it. If you are somebody that takes things very personal, that are emotional, take a deep breath. Have a sip of water. To calm you down. Don't respond. Absorb it. If you can't respond. If you're one of the people that respond in a, and you're so angry that you burst out into and it runs through him. It's going to put you on a back foot. Then rather keep quiet. Use advocates. Get somebody in the business that believe in you. Somebody that you can trust. Somebody more senior. That is there for you. That when the discussions happen around succession planning, around career development, that somebody knows you, somebody has noticed you, somebody can speak up. Have you thought about Renee for that job? Playing the long game is taking a long-term view. Having a long-term plan on where you want to be. And strategize around that. Karma. Women are not in the networking business. They're not in the business of chaps. The boys club. You don't see a lot of women in the boys club. You always need to be switched on. You always need to own your space. You always need to look the part. You always need to be prepared. And yes, if you're a woman, 110% prepared. The men will come in the 80% and they will wing it. Be your best self. Don't try and be something that you're not. You'll be caught out. And it's very tiring to try and keep up something that you're not. If you want to work on your, yourself, again, I sound like a, an ad for USB. Get yourself a mentor or a coach. It's really good advice, people. But get the right one. That will add value to your life. Pay it forward. We, as women, are not always very good at paying it forward. We're so glad at making it that, yes, now I'm just surviving. Eh? When you see another person in the, in the workplace struggling, Give them advice that nobody gave you. And then, very, very important, we're all human. You've all heard this before. When you go into an exceptionally difficult meeting, just Im imagine everybody naked. Then everybody is equal. Just six examples. There's a whole plethora of examples here. 41 examples of st strategies that you can use in the workplace to help you. Practical examples. Look at, look at how the men around you behave. Don't let yourself be left behind. They self-promote unashamedly. Learn how to do it. Take time to spot the talent, the quiet people as well. Look at them. Make sure you recognize them. Make sure you create space for them. Speak up. From the top, encourage the people around you, give them space. Play the numbers game. If you don't succeed at first, ask for help. Try again, do something different. From the top, negotiate. If you're a manager, make sure you treat your talent as adults. It's really a book worth reading. Very relevant to South Africa. Use the techniques. The, the big thing that I learned out of this is we're not alone. You might have thought, it's only me. There are tools in this book that's going to really help you. Be the best that you can be and own your space. That's the one thing that I try and teach and inculcate in the people that is in my sphere is own your space. You've worked very hard to be where you are. Now own your space. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs>